Welcome to Sunday worship at St. Cross Live. We are so glad that you are able to join us this morning. A few quick notes before we begin this morning's service. You can find the bulletin for this service at stcross.org slash live. If you would like to add a name to our prayer list, you can do that on our website also at stcross.org slash prayer. If you'd like to give to the mission and ministry of the work that we do here at St. Cross, we ask that you do so at stcross.org slash give. And last but not least, if you are new here or new to the community, we especially welcome you. We hope that you will fill out a newcomer card on our website at stcross.org slash live. Welcome to worship at St. Cross. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses 
hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them that the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in saying Psalm 105, verses 1 through 6, 23 through 26, and 45c. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen, Israel came into Egypt, and Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful. He made them stronger than their enemies, whose heart he turned so that they hated his people and dealt unjustly with his servants. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. Alleluia. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, 
for you are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us. When I first darkened the door of St. Cross, I was pretty worn out. I had worked so hard caring for people I love in a quest to keep them healthy, give them a deep sense of security, help them move always forward in order to reach their highest potential and achieve their dreams. Pondering my fatigue one fine morning, coffee in one hand, and on my second cigarette, a voice in my brain said, something has to change. I have to stop smoking, and I have to find a church I can tolerate. One of the first things I did was to sign up for a women's retreat at Mount Calvary in Santa Barbara. I was stunned at the peace and the quiet, a balm for the soul. I came across a box in the long hall containing beautiful works of art by Brother Roy Parker, calligraphy that spoke into the heart not intended for the rational brain. The first one I acquired touched my worn out heart. The glory of God is the human person fully alive. On subsequent retreats, I picked up a Buddhist gatha that proclaims, let me respectfully remind you, life and death are of supreme importance. Time swiftly passes by and opportunity is lost. Each of us should strive to awaken, awaken, awaken. Take heed. Do not squander your life. The last one I eventually took home with me was the prayer of St. Francis that begins, Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Hold these images in your mind as we explore today's gospel that leads us to the cross. The literal image of the cross as being anything but an obscenity a means of torture and death is hard to imagine. It's hard to even understand intellectually. But there is another way to envision the cross and what it is that Jesus is asking of his disciples. That is cross as symbol. Symbol of what it means on a deeper level to be a follower of Jesus. What it means when we let it speak into our hearts and not just our brains. Theologian and Franciscan priest, Father Richard Rohr, calls the symbol of the cross our Christian pattern, a pattern of life, death, and raising up. Scriptures from other world religions uphold the truth of this pattern. We hear it echoed today in the Exodus story. I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come to deliver them. Perhaps more importantly, our own human experience validates the pattern of life, death, and resurrection. 
In today's story, Peter wants nothing to do with Jesus' suffering. Jesus going through the full pattern in the most violent means humans could possibly have dreamed up. Yet like God in Exodus, Jesus unpacks something profound. By revealing that he must endure misery and death, Jesus acknowledges that being human includes violence and suffering. It includes human things. And then he leaves a blueprint for deliverance, a promise of being raised up. It is the ultimate paradox. Deny yourself and lose your life in order to save your life and find your life. Set your mind on divine things rather than human things. Human things are sometimes inflicted by our own words and actions and sometimes carried out on our behalf. Human things embrace often unconsciously what the great theologian, the Reverend Bob Corner calls the logos or logic of wrath rather than God's logic of love. Now I am just about positive that Reverend Bob will be more than happy to delve deeper into wrath than this sermon allows if you but ask and you're saying, Oh, thank you for not going into wrath. However, a condensed version that I must offer includes our propensity as humans towards all types of violence and oppression that we attempt to justify as righteous. Slavery, war, our version of crucifixion, our lack of compassion toward ourselves, and others. In the Logos of Wrath, someone or some group has to bear the weight of our collective sin, our ruthlessness. There has to be a scapegoat. As Reverend Bob states, the Logos of Wrath cannot comprehend unconditional love, mercy and not sacrifice, giving and not taking. Set your mind on divine things. Comprehending the logos of love requires us to lose our life, to deny, abandon, and let die that which is not our highest, best, and truest self. To seek God's healing of our broken parts, those parts that cling too tightly to power and control, affection and esteem, or safety and security, to seek God's healing of our worn out hearts, those parts of ourselves that are unable to absorb love or can't quite believe we are good enough or capable enough or in need of rest and repair, to seek God's healing of our aggressive or unforgiving or angry shadow side. The symbol of the cross, the Christian pattern of human life, acknowledges the truth that we suffer. Contemplating the cross inspires transformation of those parts of us that are dead. Through prayer, meditation, study, and reflection, Jesus promises us that we will become more and more awake that we will be able to see more and more clearly the opportunity that God gives us at every moment. And the most important part, that our hearts will become increasingly more compassionate to ourselves, to other people, and to the whole of creation. We are assured that we will be raised up to our fullest and truest self, resurrected. We can indeed become the glory of God, the human person fully alive. Set your mind on divine things. The cross is our symbol 
not of violence, suffering, and death, but of hope. The cross, our Christian pattern of life, death, and raising up, offers spiritual maturity, the ability to comprehend the logos of love over the logos of wrath. It trams us, transforms us to be able to pray with authenticity and integrity, Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Please join with me as we reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We glory in God's name through the offering of our prayers and petitions, responding, hear us, good Lord. For the will to discover God's word dwelling in our hearts, finding expression through our lips, and revealing hope through our generosity. We pray especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, John and Diane, our bishops, and for all other ministers of God's word. Let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. For a renewed commitment to righteousness and peace, that we may join with the leaders of all nations in seeking ways to promote harmony and mutual respect across cultures, races, and languages. We pray for our federal, state, and local leaders, especially during these times of pandemic and civil unrest. Let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. For creative ways to express our faith, drawing upon the jewels of our tradition and using our hearts and minds to proclaim Christ's message to our neighbors communities, and to those of little or no faith. Let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. For our common life together, may we cease to be a cause of suffering to one another, that we may live so that others are not deprived of air, food, water, shelter, or the chance to live. Let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. 
for the many thanksgivings that we have experienced on our journey of life and faith, especially Tim, Anita, the flower ministry, and the pastoral care ministry. We give thanks for medical personnel. May we lift our voices in praise for the gift of care that they give to others. Let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. For the sick and those in need of comfort, especially at this time, Kimberly, Jim, Frederick, Tina, Donna, Pam, Diane, Jackie, Molly, John, Nicholas, Jill, David, the Yeagers family, Terry, Vicki, Mary, Kathy, Carrie, Jacob, and the Blake family. Let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. For those who have died and reside in the tomb of death, that Christ, who broke the chains of death, will bring them to eternal life. We pray for Steve. Let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the ocean wave be with you, the peace of the ocean breeze surround you, the peace of the quiet earth be in you, the peace of the night stars cover you, the deep peace of the Son of Peace be always with you, and the blessing of God Almighty creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be with you now and always. Amen.
us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you again for joining us for our service on St. Cross Live. A few quick announcements before we go. First, if you have not been able to log on to our Facebook page to watch our nightly Compline service at 7 p.m., you may now do so at the St. Cross website at stcross.org slash Compline. We begin chit chat uh, at about 6.45 p.m and the service starts at 7 p.m. So again, stcross.org slash Compline if you are not able to log on to our Facebook page. Uh, St. Cross Day is coming up on September 13th. In addition to having Bishop Bruce be our guest speaker at the 10 a.m. service, we will also be offering a Faith at Five service at 5 p.m. that day. Please do wear red. The Faith at Five is our in-person parking lot service, and we'd love to have you there. Also, we will be offering a family Faith at Five service on September 12th, the day before, um, at 5 p.m., and families are welcome to drive their car into the parking lot and sort of tailgate our in-person service uh, on the 12th. Uh, last but not least, instead of doing a blessing of the backpacks this year, we will be doing a blessing of the devices. So tablets, computers, phones, calculators, notebooks, whatever it is that you use or that your children use for their at-home online learning, we would love to bless them as we start the school year. And that can happen one of two ways. You are more than welcome to drive through the inner parking lot uh, from 9 to 12 p.m. on September 12th. And there will be a clergy person there to bless any devices you may have. And also, if you would like to attend the Family Faith at Five service later that evening at 5 p.m., uh, we will be offering a blessing of the devices uh, at that service as well. I hope the start of school has gone smooth for many of you, and please know that the clergy is here if you need us. Thank you so much, and have a great rest of your week. Mm -hmm.